Welcome, welcome once again to our Fresh Breath service. We want to invite you to join us and to subscribe on Facebook. We're going to lift up and praise his holy name for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever and ever. We're going to just focus on his goodness this morning. He is a good God. He's been good to us. So, Lord God, we come to praise you and worship you for who you are. There is none like you in all the earth. Oh, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. And your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. And your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation. People from every nation and tongue. From generation to generation, we worship you. from every nation, people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you, hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you, for who you are, we worship, we worship, we worship.
you good this morning. You're good. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness this morning. So wherever we are, we lift our hands before you. We thank you. We come before you right now, humbly before you, Lord God. In the spirit of humility before you. To say that you are good to us. We look back on all that you've done for us. That you can't outdo us when it comes to being good. When it comes to being faithful. So Lord God, we worship you this morning. And we thank you. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so Take joy, my King, in what you hear. So let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you.
you are. Sing, I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. We thank you that you're good and your mercy endures. You're good, Lord. You're good, Lord God. You're good, Lord God. You're good, Lord God. Yes, you are. 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 You're good all the time. And all the time you're good. You're good, 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 you're good all the time and all the time you are good. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you are good. Hallelujah. You are good. Sing. reverence your presence right now. We reverence you, Lord God. You're in this place. Oh, we worship you. We honor you, Jesus. We worship you in the beauty of holiness. Oh, hallelujah. You are good.
spirit and in truth, Lord God. We worship you. We give you all the praise and all the honor. There is none like you, Lord God. You are almighty. You are omnipotent, Father. You are omniscient. You know all. You have power, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for be, being able to be counted as your friend, Lord God, being able to be called your children, the sons and daughters of the one and true God, Father. We thank you, Lord. We appreciate you. We don't take it for granted. You are so, so good to us, Lord God, even when we don't deserve it, Father. We, you are so good. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I've been meditating all morning on the goodness of God. And then I come in today and, 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 and God has directed our minister of music to select these songs. And I just thank God for his goodness. I want to tell you, family, I, I, I miss being with you guys. I know you may be able to see the, the empty pews here. Yes, we are still streaming. We are still coming to you via YouTube and, and, and the website and Facebook, but um, there's nothing like the presence of God. So I want to encourage you guys right now, and you can go through and replay this thing as many times as you want to, but I want to make sure that you don't miss the praise and worship. He inhabits the praise of his people. So, so listen, stop what you're doing and give your attention to God. It's not about me. It's about what God is going to speak through me. So stop what you're doing. If you can cast it onto your TV, whatever you need to do so that you can focus on what God has to say this morning. I'm overwhelmed by his goodness. I'm overwhelmed by his goodness. And I want to encourage you in each and every one of your homes, your cars, or wherever you are, understand that God is working all things for your good, for his children, the ones that are called according to his purpose. So understand, whatever you're going through, whatever the situation may be, it is all for your good because God loves you. You are his baby. You are his child. So he wants the best for you. I want the best for you. And I dearly miss you guys being in front of me, but, but I know by faith that you're locked in and tuned in. And, and, and even now, if you want to put a message in, in whatever platform you're viewing this in, just let me know you're there. God is an awesome God. I'm praying for you and your families right now. There's no time or distance. Thank you, Lord God. Pray with me now, family. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this awesome day that you blessed us with. Lord God, I pray for everyone that is listening under the sound of my voice, whether they hear it now or in the days and years to come. I believe, Father, that they're going to receive the word that you have today, Father, that it's going to fall on good ground and produce a great and mighty harvest, Lord God, so that others may see you through them, Father. We thank you for the opportunity to be counted as your children, to be able to represent you, Lord God, to represent you to the world. Father, we, 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 we honor you. And we're going to continue to honor you even more, Lord God, by representing you the way you want to be represented. Let this word be clear. Let it be understandable at everyone's level. Father, speak to me. Let nothing deter me from speaking the things that you want to be said. Lord God, we are in anticipation of a manifestation of you, Lord God, on this earth. Do with us as you see fit, Father. We thank you, Lord God. We believe by faith, Lord God, that today is not going to be a normal day. We're going to go stronger, Lord God, because of the presence. Because of your Holy Spirit, your presence, we're going to grow stronger today, Father. We thank you, Lord God. Commit this day to you. We commit this time to you, Lord God, in praise and worship and learning of you and learning your word. We commit it all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, family, I am working to try to get myself back on track. That praise and worship was absolutely awesome. Um, that last song that they sang, that's actually the song that I sing in my private devotion time. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Now, it was a little bit of a sweeter sound when they sang it than when I sang it in the morning, but uh, God knows my heart and he knows my desire. And so I encourage you guys right now, even before I get into this message, 
You need to have your song, your whatever your routine is. Guard it so that God knows, listen, you're taking seriously your position. You're taking seriously your responsibility. And the only way to do what God has called us to do is to be in his presence. We can't go off of uh, the revelation we got last year or two years ago. We need a, a right now word from God. And so in order to get that right now word from God, you have to be in his face on a consistent, steady basis, family. Hope, it's not, hope it doesn't sound like I'm fussing, but um, we, we, when you know better, you do better. And I'm reminding many that it's your responsibility, regardless of how busy you may be, take time to lock in and focus on what God has for you individually so that you can be a representation on this earth. All right, family, let's go to the word. The title of today's message is Shine, S-H-I-N-E, Shine. Now, truthfully, I really wanted to have a different picture on the screen when I, when I came up with this uh, title, and, and, and this word is inspired by God uh, because he really kind of arrested me earlier this week, reminding me that, listen, boy, I'm God. I'm your daddy, I'm your friend, but don't forget that I am God. And what I mean by that is God has an expectation for us. And what we talked about two weeks ago, we took a brief intermission for Father's Day, and I hope you go back and, and take a look uh, at that video. It was an awesome panel discussion. But prior to that, we talked about being the light. And today we're going to extend that same message, and we're going to focus on learning how to shine. Now, in my culture... It is uh, customary for us to shine and be a little flamboyant into, into, you know, whatever money we have, we're going to normally have it on us in some kind of way or in our car. It is ordinary for people in my culture to, to shine. But what we're going to talk about today is understanding that God actually does want us to shine. We're going to go through the scripture. We're going to see you. I'm going to show you time and time again where he is talking about the light and he's talking about the requirement of us as children of the light to remain lit. Okay? L I T, lit. So we're going to make sure that we keep the shine up. Why are we shining? We're shining because God is telling us in his word. Now we're going to start in the Old Testament. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. It says, Arise, Jerusalem. And this uh, is the Old Testament is sp speaking specifically to the chosen people, which we are, those that have chosen to become Christians. It says, let your light shine for who? All to see. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. It says, for the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. All right. Now, there's a bunch of different directions I could have gone with this message but I want to have a laser focus, in, and I want you guys to, to kind of interpret and pick uh, apart the understanding that he keeps referring to light for a reason. The only reason you start talking about light is why? When it's dark. Nobody really thinks about light until it gets dark. So what God is revealing in his word from the Old Testament to the New Testament is that there is darkness all around us in different forms. And so it's, it's, it's incumbent upon us to make sure that we not just know that we're the light, but we have to shine our light, okay? Let's go to the text so y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Go to Matthew chapter 5, verses 14. Before we go there, go to John chapter 12, verse 35. Let's take a stop at John chapter 12, verse 35. I know you're not in front of me. When you, when you got it, say, I got it. All right. It says, then Jesus told them, you are going to have the light just a little while longer. And let me give you the context of this. This is Jesus talking. So he's given a revelation and he's kind of telling everybody, listen, I am the light. He's already told them that I am light. He says, you are going to have the light just a little while longer. So he's kind of predicting his death. And so he's referring to himself as the light. And then he says, walk while you have the light. Before darkness overtakes you, whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Verse 36 says, believe in the light while you have the light, so that you may become children of light. Okay, okay, take this in now. Take this in. 
Imagine this context. We're, we're in a situation where no prophet spoke for 400 years. It was very solid. Wasn't a lot of revelations. And then Jesus comes on the scene, a young guy, right? Relatively young guy, 30, 31 years old. And he comes in and says, listen, I'm the light. So just imagine somebody comes up right now, put this in real terms, and says, I'm the light. So you can imagine that, that there were more than enough people hating and upset and like, who is this guy, right? He says, I am the light. So again, Jesus is here for our example, right? We, we have him all throughout the text as our example. So what is he showing us right here? He's telling people, listen, I am the light. And he's encouraging, listen, I'm not going to be here long. So I want you to make sure that you take every piece of me that you can, absorb it, understand how I'm living, what I'm doing, what I'm saying. Because at the end of verse 36, it says, so that you may become children of light, children of light. We know that the one supreme being is God the Father. So children of light. So in the same manner that Jesus was a child of light, we also are called to be children of light. So how do we carry ourselves? We carry ourselves with a level of confidence, not arrogance, but confidence in knowing who we are in him. And also not just knowing who we are, but knowing what our responsibility is. Because it's one thing to know who you are, but it's another thing to have the sense of responsibility. Okay? So God wants us to make sure we take on that mantle of knowing that, listen, I want you guys to shine. Let me keep going. Let me give you all some more text. Go to Matthew chapter 5, verses 14. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14. So now the context is changing a little bit. First, Jesus says, I'm the light. I want you to be the children light. Now it comes in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. It says, you are the light of the world. There it is again. Now he's talking to us. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lamp stand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16 says something. It says, let your light so shine. Not just shine. Listen to me now. It says, let your light so shine. So that means it's important just to, not just to, okay, yeah, I'm the light. No, I need to shine. So, so shine is like an adverb. So is like an, an it's like exciting or accelerating the word shine. So I need to really shine. And you guys know, in, in, in some, it may not have been in your community, but you always had people that went a little bit above and beyond to make it known that they were in the room, Okay whether it was a chain that they had on, the clothes, the, the Gucci, whatever, whatever it was they had on, they wanted to make sure that you saw them shining. And so what I want you to talk about, I want you guys to, to kind of take away from my talk today is to make sure that you understand that, listen, in the same manner that that person is intentional about shining with, with material things in life, you at the same level or even greater need to be intentional about you shining the God that is within you. Stay with me now. Because, see, a lot of people say, okay, well, I'm not really that flash. I'm not really this. Listen, we, I didn't ask you what, what your default uh, lifestyle is. I didn't ask you what your default is. I'm telling you what's in the Scripture. It is selling, it's saying us, let your light so shine. And it's showing you why. Verse 16, before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let me say that again. Keep it on the screen. It says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father in heaven. So it's, it's telling us that we have to let our light so shine before men, and the purpose of it is so that men may see us and glorify our good works, not glorify, but see our good works so that we can, so they can glorify our Father. So they need to see the light in us so they can see the light that is Him. Stay with me now. Now, a lot of times people will think when they see good works, you know, it, it, the, the default goes, so, okay, let me go on Facebook Live and let me show myself handing food out to somebody. Let me hold my, hold my phone. Okay, we live right now, family. We live right now, family. Okay, look here. You see this poor guy? Watch me give this money to him. Okay. Uh, yeah, hey, hey, look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. That's not what God is talking about. He's not talking about a public display of you always trying to show that you're, you're, you're giving or you're trying to help somebody. And, and in essence, your heart is probably not even right in the right place if all you always do is show it. To be honest with you, the, the, the people that give the most, the people that are, are the most, uh, uh, retain the most harvest, are the people that do things in secret sometimes. So I'm not talking about those type of good works. What I'm talking about good works 
is going to encompass that, but it also includes you standing for what is right in the darkness. So let me, let me explain what I mean. And let, let, me, let me go, straight, let me go straight, straight for the heart on this. We're about three and a half years into a political season where our leader has been somewhat oppressive in, in many people's eyes, right? Uh, somewhat erratic in behavior, somewhat, you know, all over the place, right? So now let me, let me give you a, a prime example of this. As a Christian, if we get into a conversation about the leader of our nation, then we have to ask ourselves, should I sound just like everybody else? Because, again, it's easy to say, okay, well, good works. No, no, I'm, I'm dealing with the difficult stuff right now. I'm dealing with the difficult stuff. I'm dealing with the difficult stuff because, see, God is requiring something else because he said, let our light so shine. So that means that there is an extra push that's going to have to come from, from us in order for him to shine. So what I'm telling you is this. I'm not saying you don't speak truth to power. I'm not saying that you don't acknowledge what someone is doing. But what I'm saying is your conversation does not need to end with, yeah, I know he's terrible. No, listen, it doesn't need to end there. Because what happens is a lot of times we get amnesia about our responsibility as Christians. For those of you who have grown up in church, you know what the word says about our leaders. What are you supposed to do for our leaders? We pray for our leaders. By faith, we already know that the heart of the king is, is in the Lord's hand and he turns it however he wants to turn it. And we also know that we are to respect our leaders. So how in the world am I going to say I'm going to so shine in a dark world if I'm doing everything everybody else is doing, if I'm saying everything everybody else is saying? Are y'all with that? Keep, keep, the, keep the screen on. Don't get distracted now. Don't get distracted now. Stay, stay right with me. And the reason I want you guys to hear that is because it is convenient to just step in and just agree without agreeing with the prayer that you should have been praying. Stay with me now, because see, we've been called to pray for our leaders. We can't complain about our leaders if we're not praying about our leaders. And now, so if I go ahead and commit myself to prayer, now I have faith believing that something is going to change. I'm believing that the heart of the king is going to change. I'm believing that his life is going to become closer to God's life so that his, his, his communication, everything that he does is going to be aligned with what God wants. That's what I'm praying. So now if I pray that, and then I say something else, then I've just canceled my prayer. Stay with me, family. So the way that, one way that we show our light is in situations and conversations like this, whether it's in the barbershop, beauty shop, on the phone, whatever it is, I have to make sure that I'm conscious, are my words in faith, or is it just convenient for me to, to, to just agree? Because I can't allow my conversation to rule out my confession. So if I'm believing by faith that things are going to change, I'm believing that prayer works, and I know that God is listening to me when I pray. So if I'm believing all that, I can't keep saying that things are never going to change. I can't keep saying that things are going to keep getting worse. Why? Because I'm the light. Stay with me, family. Stay with me. Let me switch over because some of y'all might have got a wrinkle in your forehead when I started talking about your leader, So our leader. So what I want you to uh, switch over to, this is every area in life. So the way we shine our light is even with our family. So... <laughs> And I'm not talking about the family members we want to tell everybody about. I'm talking about the ones in the back of the closet you don't want nobody to know about. The crazy ones, the crazy uncle that's in the back room that, that, that'll run out and, and, and tackle you. The, the people that you don't want to talk about in your family, but they're there. You have to make sure you even keep your conversation right with them. I'm talking about them lying family members. I'm talking about the ones that, that, that borrow money and then they forget that, that you, you know, okay, let me, let me keep moving, let me keep moving, let me keep moving. So what I'm saying is this. Your conversation needs to be one of light. So I don't care how bad that person is, my perspective is one that God has. So even, that, even though they have major issues, I have the grace to extend to them so that when everybody's talking about them, I say, listen, yes, it is true. Yes, they may be a liar. Yes, they may have molested such and such. Yes, they may have done all these things, but God is greater than that. So our prayer needs to be that God is going to move upon them. Labors are going to come across their path and direct them to a lifestyle of holiness where they are falling in line with what God wants them to do. That is being the light, family. Y'all must have thought this was going to be easy. I, 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 don't, I don't know what you expected when, I saw, when you saw the word shine. Th this is not an easy thing. Listen, salvation is free, but Christianity is going to cost you something. So it costs something to so shine, but it's a requirement that we have been given by the Father. And so if we look at our example, Jesus, stay with me now. 
The things that he did were not easy. They were difficult. He came against religion. He came against things that everybody thought was right. He came against them. Why? Because he was coming in the name of God. And he knew who he was. And he had to be bold. So what I'm encouraging guys right now, you have to be bold in every situation that you come in. Boldness, not just in boldness for boldness sake, but I'm talking about boldness with an awareness of who you are in God. So that includes, see, see, this is the thing. We've been talking about the mind for about almost a month now. So that's why it's important to get this thought life right. So that your conversation can be right. So that your actions can be right. So that your life can be right. So that others may come to you and see him. Let me let you guys in on something. Many people have so much difficulty with, with coming to God because they can't see him. Stay with me now. Just think about that. Just, just think about the Israelites. They were in, in, God had already delivered them. He sent all these plagues. He, 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 he delivered them from the Egyptians, delivered them from slavery. They get in the wilderness. They literally have a flame of fire guiding them at night, and they have a cloud guiding them by day. They see this, right? What do they decide to do? They decide to make images so that they could see them and worship them. Stay with me, family. When you think about that, it sounds so stupid, right? Why in the world would you make an image to worship it? It's because people have an addiction to wanting to be able to see and to touch. So let me tell you what our job is, family. Our job is to be the ones that they can see and touch. And we are the ones that are a representation of our Father. And the way we turn into light is by going against the grain. So when everybody is talking about how there's going to be a recession or how this is going to happen or, or we're going to get sick or all these things are going to happen, you have to be the light in that situation and show people not so much just showing for showing's sake, but have an understanding that it is my responsibility that when trouble comes, I have to be the light. I have to lean and depend on God and not on my own understanding. Why? Because it is my job to be the light. Not so much just out of a religious practice, but I'm doing what God is saying to do because he says, let your light so shine. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Listen to me now, imagine this. A city on a tall hill with the light in it. It cannot be hidden. I don't care what's going on. If you have a city, a house that is on a hill, regardless whether it's day or night, you can see the, you can see the house. You can see the city. So you see, that's what, that's what the world is craving for. They're craving for. That's why we, we, we had so much, uh, they had so much success with reality TV. People want authenticity. They want to be able to see Jesus. They want to be able to touch and talk to Jesus. And let me let you in on a secret. It is your requirement. It is not, not, not just something you can selectively do. This is our requirement. We are required to be the light. And let me extend it on a little, a little further because this thing can get much deeper. I'm not just talking about your barbershop or beauty shop conversations where you're, where you're standing for God even though it's inconvenient. I'm talking about in a situation where your child dies. Stay with me now. Where your child dies and you still have so much faith, so much foundation in God that you encourage the people that have taken the life of your son. Mm. Stay with me now. This, this is, let me give you a real life testimony. A, a, a guy in my family, he lost his son. They were in a car accident. A drunk driver hit them and their child died. Let me tell you what this family did. They went and contacted him. They prayed for him. Even though he didn't ask for forgiveness, they gave him forgiveness. Why? Because they knew who they were in Christ. They knew their responsibility to be the light. They knew that that person was hurting and that the enemy could have taken them out with depression, but they decided to free them. Why? Because they were the light. And so I want to encourage you guys, you guys need to be in a position where you're always looking for opportunities. Stay with me now. You're looking for opportunities to be the light in someone's life. Let's keep going into this text. Let's go to uh, 1 John um, Chapter 1, verses 5. It says, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light 
In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in light as he is in light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So go back to verse 7. Put that back up for me. It says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light. So, so, so listen, listen, listen. This light, and I'm only giving you a few references to the light that is in the text. There are many more depictions of where God is talking about the light, describing himself as the light. The reason we have to make sure that we shine is that we can't depend on somebody else to shine for us. Let me say that again. I cannot depend on my mom to shine, my parents, not even my pastor, not even the mother of the church. I can't, I can't depend on anybody else to do this for me. I don't care what age you are. If you've decided to give your life to the Lord, it is your responsibility. So when school starts back, I don't care if you're going to the second grade, the 12th grade, whatever grade you're going to, understand as soon as I wake up, not when I get to school, but as soon as I wake up, I have to acknowledge God because I know that God needs me to so shine this day. He needs me to so shine. He needs me to represent him. So I have to represent him in my text messages. I have to represent him in my post, in, in, in the Instagram uh, post that I make. I have to represent him everywhere I go. I cannot blend into the background. There's enough background singers. We need some leads in the body of Christ. Somebody has to step up. Why not you? And see, let me tell you something. A lot of people don't want to do it because they're, they're afraid of, of the repercussion. They're afraid of, okay, they're going to say this, or they're going to think I'm too spiritual. They're going to think I'm a little weird, okay? I'm not telling y'all to be weird. Stay with me, family. You don't have to be weird with it. But what I want you to, want you to say is you have to be motivated and aware that I've got to do something every day. Listen, we have to look for opportunities to showcase our dad every single day. Don't take days off. You may take a Sabbath day, that's fine, but you still need to wake up with, 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 with an idea that, you know what, I'm going to find a way to glorify God today. I'm looking for opportunities. So anytime somebody walks and they, they, they may be sick or they may be uh, out, of, out of work, I need to use that opportunity to show God. I need to use that opportunity to say, you know what, I went through a similar situation. You know what, I've got this test. This happened to me. And remember, like I said in the beginning, all things are working for the good. And so what happens is those times, those seasons that we've been in, in the past, we use those at its ministry to other people. So it's, more, it's easier, easier for us to, to have empathy with people that are going through when we've gone through something. And many people are in, the, in, in a season right now where they may not have all that they want. The, the, the place where they are and the place that they're believing they're supposed to be may be far apart, and they may be losing hope. It is your job to bridge that gap. It is your job to pick them up if their countenance is falling. It's your job to straighten them. Listen, baby, it's going to be okay. You cannot faint in this season. Stay with me now because this thing is not always easy. But let me tell you something. God has given us everything that we need. He's given us everything that we need to shine. And another person I love to talk about when we talk about shining is Moses. Let's go to the Old Testament if y'all don't mind. Go to Exodus 34, 29. It's going to be on the screen. Exodus 34, 29. It says, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them. So Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him and he spoke to them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near all the Israelites came near him and gave them all the commands the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. Stay with me. Verse 32 is the message. He gave them all the commands the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. Verse 33 says, when Moses finished speaking to them, he put veil over his face. But whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, they saw that his face was radiant. Okay? Listen to me. 
stay, come, come, come back in. So, so we see this story. I wanted to read it because I want you guys to have it in your remembrance. I want you guys to visualize the picture of Moses being on this mountain speaking with God face to face. And then when he comes out of the presence of God, his face is different. He has literally changed. Why? Because he was in God's presence. He was in his presence. So for those who are looking for the strength and, and, and the wisdom, how do I get to this point where I can shine? Moses is giving us a clear picture right here. The way that we shine, the way that we're able to command and direct people in darkness is by spending time with God. I almost hope y'all get tired of me saying this. I almost hope y'all do because I, I want it to be ingrained in here. Meditating the word of God. His word is a lamp into my feet, a light into my path. I'm spending time with him in prayer. I'm spending time with him just sitting still, listening. Not in prayer doing all the talking, but sitting still, listening. Allowing God to speak to me. Why? Because I need my orders. I need my opportunities that are going to come up for that day. And so we see in here Moses, his whole appearance changed. Why did it change? It changed because he spent time with God. So I know you may be busy. I know you may have filled your time up with all of these things in life. But if we're going to fulfill the responsibility, if we're going to do the thing that God has called us to do, let me come around here. I want to look at y'all real close. If we're going to do the thing that God has called us to do, if we're going to let our light so shine, we have to spend the time with the Father. Moses spent that time with the Father, and he came out, and his face was radiant. I don't know about you guys, but when I think about this, I, I'm, a, I'm a baby of the 80s. I think about Bruce Leroy and, uh, uh, okay, y'all may not know about Bruce Leroy, but in, in, in show enough. But anyway, so, so, so Bruce Leroy finally had figured out how to shine when he understood who he was. And so what I want you guys to understand is you got to understand who you are and who, who your, what your responsibility is. And so if you understand that the key to, to shining, the key to, to living a life Fulfilled only comes from him. We read books, we watch YouTube University, and we see all these motivational things, and we, we get excited. All of that is cool. But do not forsake your time with the Father. No YouTube video can replace the motivation that God can give you. No, 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 no conversation or, 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 or feed on, on Facebook or, or Instagram can give you what God has for you. I come before you right now, and the reason that I'm here and the reason that I'm talking so intensely is because that's how God dealt with me this, this week. He said, he said, listen, boy, I am God. He says, I am God. You cannot, you cannot get so busy that you don't spend time with me. And the thing that overwhelmed me just during the praise and worship day was, was the thing that's been resonating in my mind all morning. God, it's been so good. He's been so good. And, and, and if you don't take a moment to really process and look back over your life, it's easy to forget. But I want you guys to take a moment. Just think, God has been so good. There's many seasons that you've been in, dark times that you've been in that you did not know that you were going to come out. But he's been so good. You're still here. You're still standing. When many people would not have made it, you're still standing. Through sickness and disease, through depression, through poverty, through people, people lying on you, letting you down, you're still here. You didn't fall apart. You still have your mind in the right place. You still can make decisions. God has not forgotten you. I'm going to tell you guys right now, God has not forgotten you. He needs you. He needs me and he needs you so that others can see his goodness. If you're not saved right now, I want to make sure that you understand that Salvation doesn't come by default. It just doesn't come by watching a TV show or, or showing up to church one time. Salvation comes by faith. And like I said before, many people are searching for a God that they can touch and see. But the reality is that you can touch and see me. I'm not perfect, but I'm in pursuit of God. And with every effort, I, I, I am attempting to be the light 
in every world system, in every arena that I'm in, whether it's in business, I'm trying to do people right and, and be a blessing to them. Whether it's in just social settings, I'm trying to be a blessing to them. My ch I'm trying to be a blessing to them. I'm trying to show God through me. And so if you're not saved, you've never given your life to the Lord, please let today be the day. You may have heard it before. It sounds like cliche, but tomorrow's not promised. Let me tell you something. In two minutes, it's not promised to you. It's not. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you saw, what somebody told you. Heaven is real, and hell is also real. But you have to choose you this day whom you will serve. And if you're not serving God by default, the enemy already has you, whether you know it or not. So I'm encouraging you, make the choice. Make the decision to choose him. So if you don't know how to make this happen, I'm going to walk you through the scriptures right now. Go to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. What you're doing in this moment for those that are deciding to come to Jesus, you're saying, listen, I know I have not been doing things right. But in this moment, I'm going to give my life to God. I'm going to make him the Lord and boss of my life. And whatever that word says, I'm going to do it. Whatever God leads me to do, I'm going to do it. So that's what this is about. Old things are going to pass away. You become a new creature. So you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart. You can't do one without the other. So listen, right now, for those of you who want to give your life to the Lord, say with me, Father, I know that I have been a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness now. From this moment forward, I commit to allowing you to be the Lord of my life. I believe that Jesus came to the earth, died on the cross, and rose again for my sins. And for that, I'm grateful. And I accept being a child of God. I thank you, Lord God. And right now, from this moment forth, if you believe in your heart what you just said and confess, you are now saved. God is an awesome God. He's an awesome God. So now you're a part of this family, the kingdom of God. You're a part of this family. Welcome, my brother. Welcome, my sister, to the family. Please don't turn me off. We're going to have at the end an opportunity for you to call a number so that we can send you a book and send you materials so that we can stay connected. Don't allow the, the fact that you're not in front of me right now to deter you from being connected to us. Because I also want to know that you can join this church right now in this moment. Every, nobody else is here, so, so you're not missing anything. I don't care what country you're in, I don't care what state you're in, we would love to have you. And we want to communicate with you. That's why we want you guys to, to send us messages uh, uh, via, the, via the platform that you're on. We also want you guys to find a way to call that number so that we can continue to stay connected. God loves you. God loves you. And we want to continue to let you know what you need to do to continue to stay connected and to grow. So just like a child who, 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 who is just born, you don't, you don't leave that child alone. So we don't want to leave you alone. We want you to stay connected. And we want to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Our pastor, Dr. Holloway, we have hours and hours of information. Go back and scroll through those YouTube videos on our website. Go through and look through those messages so you can continue to grow. And we will continue to connect with you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for giving your life to the Lord. Your life is never going to be the same if you press in. Right now, we're going to take a moment. I know you guys are still tuned in and still locked in. We're going to take a moment to do our tithes and offering. Under normal circumstances, I would say, everybody get excited, but on your own, I need you to get excited. God loves a cheerful giver. So this is not a time just, okay, they, they looking for the money, no. This is for your account, so this is for you. I got a scripture I wanna read to you guys. Luke chapter 12, it says, take heed, this is a parable, take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentiful. And he thought within himself, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. 
and there I will store all of my crops and goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, what? Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then, the, then whose would those things be which you have provided? So I love that word fool. I don't know what version it is, New King James, but I like that. I like a good fool every now and then. So fool. So let me give you the context and let me give you the interpretation of what this means. This is someone who was doing very well, right? And so they decided to listen. I'm not really concerned about giving to people. I'm going to go ahead and just build a bigger barn or build, build a bigger container so I can hold more of my toys, more of my stuff. And then the parable shows that, you know what? Life is over for you. Tonight is your last night. So just think about that. The mentality of this person was, I'm going to get all I possibly can, and I'm not really concerned about anybody else. So the reason I'm reading this scripture to you guys is I want to make sure that you, you, you lead a lifestyle of giving. Giving to church is cool. Giving to this charity is cool. But your entire life needs to be one where I'm giving. I'm esteeming others higher than myself. So how do I do that? I constantly give. Listen, he gives seed to the sower. Why in the world would God give a lot to a person who never gives stuff to anyone? See, we have to be a conduit. We have to be somebody that, that God can feed and that we can feed others. So I'm saying all this to say, the light that I've been talking about today is inclusive of your giving. So I'm not, say, not saying that you have to tell everybody how much you're giving, but you just have to be a natural giver. And the way you become a natural giver is, is why you're concerned about others. So yes, now is an opportunity to give to the church. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and give right now. There's going to be a text message uh, option on the screen where you can give your tithes and offering. So you can do that right now. There it is. It's that simple. You can give your tithes and offering right now. If you don't want to give right now electronically, you can also go to the website. Uh, if you want to give it physically, you can mail it. The P.O. Box information will be at the screen at the end of service. Or you can bring it up here to the church between 10 and 12 on Wednesday and between 12 and 2 on Friday. But what I encourage you guys is make sure that you keep giving, especially, especially when you don't have a lot. I want you to press in. People don't just have these huge testimonies out of the blue. It's because they gave when they didn't have a lot. It's because they pressed in and continued consistently giving their tithes when they didn't know what tomorrow was going to look like. I, I, I'm learning, family, right now, even more than ever, I get excited. I embrace these challenges when they come because I know what's going to come on the other side of them. I keep my mind full of what God has already done for me. And I, when I look back and see what he's done, and these things start to come in me right now, I know that something is going to come on the other end if I stay faithful, if I manage what I have, if I keep the faith. So I'm encouraged right now, please give. Give. 10%, your tithe should be the beginning point. You can give more than that. Give. Why? Because others are in need. See, Jesus came on this earth for the poor and those who are marginalized. So give. Our church is involved with giving to different ministries, to different people, so give. Use the church as good ground. Use your pastors as good ground. Your mentors as good ground. Continue to sow. And let me tell you something, it's nothing like living a life, always receiving a harvest off of all the seed that you've already sown. We walk by faith and not by sight. So we also give by faith and not by sight. All right, I'm not gonna preach a whole nother sermon, but I want y'all to get there, amen? Let me pray of your offerings right now. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the seeds that have been sown. We pray and ask that you bless every household that is represented. Father, every seed that has been given, I pray, Lord God, that you allow a great and mighty harvest to come and allow those persons, to, people to be mindful that it is you as the reason for the harvest. Father, we thank you. We praise you. And we know, Lord God, that you have all the answers and everything that we need. You are the great I am and we trust in your financial plan. 
We thank you, Lord God, and we see it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Listen, I had an awesome time, guys. I hope you did as well. Uh, as I say all, all the time, like, share, subscribe. This is your ministry. This is your opportunity to minister by clicking the button. So uh, I want you guys to stay tuned. We do have some uh, announcements that I want you to hear. Uh, and I'm glad you chose to join us. And we are praying for you, are missing you, and we hope to see you soon. All right, stay tuned. God bless you.